the last Range Rover Sport was really just a thinly disguised discovery. And as for the Sport badge on the bonnet, the less said about that, the better. But things have changed a lot since then. The new Range Rover Sport is based on the same platform as the latest Range Rover. That means it's shed about a fifth of its body weight, which is about the same as a tubby new forest pony. And that's brought with it improvements in lots of areas. For starters, it has a better turn of speed. 60 miles an hour passes in 6.8 seconds. Emissions are much better too, and so is fuel economy at a claimed combined 37.7 mpg. And the revelation, it doesn't handle like an old brick. In fact, it's surprisingly good to drive. It doesn't have too much body roll thanks to a raft of new high-tech chassis control systems. The 8-speed auto transmission is a delight and the electronic steering is sharp yet light. On the outside, you'll spot the trademark Range Rover clamshell bonnet. But that steeply raked windscreen makes it look much more like an Evoque that spent too much time down the gym. In this autobiography model, I'm surrounded by swathes of soft touch leather and aluminium. It's got the same cooled glove box and touchscreen multimedia system as the big Range Rover, and it does feel as luxurious in here. The back seats are designed to be really comfortable for two people, but you could get three people in here too. There's nowhere near as much boot space as the old model had, but at a claimed 784 litres, it's still big enough to get in and have a nap if you need to. It doesn't have a split tailgate like the big Range Rover, but it does have remote electronic opening. It can also do this. Intelligent electronic systems automatically detect if it's starting to lose traction, and they transfer power to the wheel with the most grip. The suspension loosens up and the vehicle will even, sensibly, stop you from flooring the throttle if it knows you're burying the wheels in deep mud. If you want even better manners in the mud, you could pick a dynamic version of the SDV6 or the petrol V8. These cost over £3,000 more, but they do come with a two-speed transfer box that adds two ultra-low crawler gears, as well as adaptive suspension and electronic terrain response. OK, so the Range Rover is still the undisputed king of off-roaders, but this car definitely comes a very close second. If you want one of these cars, buy it new and do consider getting shot of it before the warranty expires at three years. And be prepared to get to know your local Land Rover service department well, because you might be seeing a lot of them. Reliability issues aside, the Range Rover Sport has got a lot going for it. It's much more affordable than the big Range Rover, but it's also a Range Rover under the skin. To find out more about the Range Rover Sport and some of its rival, click on the links below.